Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Again, it's good to be here this Sunday in the house of the Lord to worship Him, to praise Him, and to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for what He has given us to Jesus Christ. Amen. A few announcements. Well, first that we celebrate in the Christian Church today is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And we follow the order of service. I hope that everybody has it. And remember, we, I, I brought us as well some devotion for the week in a separate uh, uh, half page. So you could take it as well from that table. If you would like to have your <coughs> devotion during the week. Um, remember, we are a time to begin our Operation Christmas Child. It's in the bulletin. And you would like to participate in this uh, Operation Christmas Child, you could uh, do that. And as well, if you don't want to put anything in box, you could uh, donate. Uh, cash. There is cash donations uh, as well, so you could do that. If you need to, more information about this, you can speak with Carol Wilkinson, and the phone number is there in the, in the bulletin. So there are more information about this. And for this week at Faith in Grace, on Tuesday we have Pastor Circuit Meeting at Good Shepherd and Trustees Meeting at 6.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. we have a Council Meeting. And we have more activities for, for Faith in Grace. So take the bulletin with you and you will know all the activities and all the information for you to know. Anyway, so I guess we, we are ready to worship our Lord. Please rise and let us begin with the silence prayer. Okay. Please. You may be seated at this moment while we sing the hymns, Blessed Jesus, at you.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. You declare your steadfast love in the morning, and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the Lord. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your word. And the words of your hands I sing for joy. Your decrees are, are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. It is good and right that we should make confession of our sins. The section of confession in the small catechism informs and directs us with these words, which summarizes it well. Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Humble yourself then before God. Confess your sins to Him and implore His forgiveness. Let us meditate in our transgressions toward God and toward our neighbor. God speak. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I ever offended you, and justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. By nature, I am sinful creature. By thought, word, and deed, I have continually transgressed your law. For the sake of the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a penitent and contrite being. Forgive me all my sins, and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit, that I may amend my sinful life. God be gracious to you, and strengthen your faith. Amen. Amen. As you believe, so let it be. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our Troy, and we speak it responsibly. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in the spirit. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, my invite the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. And the righteous cry for God, the Lord hears Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your divine wisdom sets in order all things in heaven and on earth. Put away from us all things hurtful and give us those things that are beneficial for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Ecclesiastes 5, verses 10 to 20. Let us remember the enjoyment of life is a gift of God. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is vanity. When goods increase, they increase to eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much. But the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his herd. And those riches were lost in a bad venture. And he is a father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so he shall go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all these days he eats in darkness, in much vexation, in sickness, and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him. For this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle today is from Hebrews 4, um, 1 to 13. A Sabbath rest remains for God's people. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. But we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in the passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some who enter it, and those who formerly, formerly received the good news failed to enter because of the disobedience, again he appoints a certain day. Today, saying to David, so long afterward, in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword,
piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, with man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. With, with God all things are possible. You may rise. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children, and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith is speaking the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made. Being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scripture, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is called by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. In the life of the world to come. You may be seated. We continue the sermon.
speaks about the whole business of wealth and money. Verse 10 says, He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. What the author of Ecclesiastes is speaking is all law. It is all vanity and sin. It shows us our sins. Have you noticed for sure that at the beginning of our worship services, we start with confession. We confess our sins to God. We say, one way or another, I am a poor, miserable sinner. And this confession is not about wealth, prosperity or poverty, but about our sin and transgressions. We take God's good gift of wealth and possession and we misunderstand how we are supposed to use it. Do we make a God out of it? Do we reject it? Do we fight over it? Does it serve us or do we serve it? Do we let it make us feel oppressed or oppressive? Why cannot we just enjoy it as God intended us to use and enjoy His good gift? Why not to use what God has given us and be a good steward in His kingdom? This first reading ties so nicely with what we have from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Mark. Today's Gospel builds on the account of the rich young ruler who came to Jesus, the good teacher, to find out what he must do to inherit eternal life. But after a little discussion, he went away sorrowful because it turns out that gold was his God. Jesus then turns this occasion into a teaching moment to teach. Not only his disciples, but us too. That none of us, rich or poor, can enter the kingdom of God on our own. Instead, the kingdom of God comes to us because nothing is impossible with God. Whether we are rich or poor, the Holy Spirit's gift of faith in the work of Jesus Christ puts us into the kingdom of God. So to, under, to understand the words of Jesus properly, we need to understand how they understood wealth in the days of Jesus. In today's society, it's normal to call most of the wealthy people as villains and oppressors. Our society today wants to take a broad brush to all rich people and expose them as stingy, who have yet to be reformed by the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. On the other hand, there is a special reverence for people who take a, a voluntary vow of poverty in order to serve others. 
We admire the work Mother Teresa types, the doctor who gives up the wealthy practice to serve the poor in some far off place. We in the church have heard the words of Jesus concerning wealth and somehow have gotten the idea that the poor have most favored status with God on the basis of their financial condition. This was not so in first century Israel. The people of Jesus' time had a much different view. It is true that the Bible speaks against people who amassed wealth illegally. But those who achieved wealth through diligence and hard work were considered to be the favor of God. The honor places in heaven were reserved for people who gained wealth in legal ways. Through hard work, in fair trade and use it to support the community. So the disciples would have thought that the honest rich are the most likely to enter heaven for they are the favored ones of God. And then Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. This idea shook them to the core that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for even the best people that the society has to offer to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is no wonder that the disciples were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? And there is the question of the day. Who can be saved? Who can be saved if even the best person you know has more difficult difficulty than that camel? And more importantly, how are you going to be saved? The question never really gets answered but just hangs there because everybody knows exactly what Jesus is saying that nobody can be saved on their own doing and working. No one, <coughs> not the rich, not the poor, not the hard worker or the lazy, not the clever or the dull, the strong or the weak. No one can enter the kingdom of God with man, it is impossible. That is the hard message of the law in today's gospel reading. But we need to be careful here. Jesus does not say that it is bad to be rich, but that no one is able to enter the kingdom of God with their own resources. When Jesus said that the most respected members of society could not earn their way into God's kingdom, he was saying that none of us, rich or poor, can earn a place in God's kingdom. All of us are likely to enter God's kingdom as a camel is likely to pass through the eye of a needle. Friends, here's the problem. It is a first commandment issue. Whoever trusts in his riches cannot be saved because such trust excludes Christ and without Christ there is no salvation. These words apply to all, whether they may be who make money their God or who make poverty or anything else their God. Here is a warning in the example of the rich young man. The Apostle Paul warned Timothy against this false trust. He writes in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty 
nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. And yet, riches in themselves are not a course. It is not money, but it is the love of money that is a root of evil. There is nothing wrong with wealth, but there is something sinful when we let the creation take place of the Creator. Jesus said it twice to emphasize the warning and bring it to a conclusion with the words concerning salvation, that with man this is impossible. And yet Jesus is not finished talking. The law is not the last word. It only leads to the world that Jesus really wanted to get to. With man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. So, friends, in Christ, the rich young man could have been saved. We do not hear that in the reading, but that does not mean that the Lord Jesus Christ is finished with him. Perhaps that man came to his senses and gave up his trust in his riches. Perhaps later in his life the law made him recognize that he was a sinner and said, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities. And heard the word of Christ, fear not, for I forgive you. Look to me, for I am the way and the truth and the life. Friends, the law does its work here too. The Holy Spirit is busy amongst us too, showing us our sins, showing us the folly of the love of money, that it takes you, that it takes you places that you should not go, for we truly are poor, miserable sinners. But the good news is that Jesus is not finished talking. The law is not the last word. It only leads to the word that Jesus really wanted to get to. With man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Our salvation and eternal life are free gifts of God. With men, it is impossible. Impossible to earn salvation, impossible to do it through the deeds of the law. It is impossible to save oneself by way of merit, no matter how you determine that or by what means you measure it. But with God, all things are possible. He provides the means and the way He made our salvation possible. He sent His only begotten Son into the world to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In His love and mercy, He made it possible for people to receive eternal life. What man was unable to do, God did, as the Apostle Paul so nicely said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 and 21. It says, that is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. For our sake he made him to be seen who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Friends, while salvation is impossible for man, it is not impossible for God. For with God all things are possible. So how do we enter into the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus Christ went to the cross for you. He died for all of your sins and my sins. He rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. Then He sent His Holy Spirit to call you by the gospel that is 
those words of our loving God that speaks about all the things He does for us. Like forgive us, make us His child, and give us eternal life in the kingdom of God. Those are the words of the gospel. You hear them here a lot. You heard them once by the baptismal font when a bit of water was poured on your forehead. You hear them after the confession of sins when the pastor stands in the stead by the command of Christ and forgives all your sins. You hear the good news of Christ's forgiveness at Holy Communion when you take and eat and drink for the forgiveness of sins. There is God at work. There is Christ. There is the Holy Spirit, making it possible for you to enter the kingdom of God. There is God at work. There is Christ. There is the Holy Spirit turning you away from yourself, away from your sinful merits or worthiness, pointing you right to Jesus Christ, your Savior. For God, all things are possible. He has accomplished our salvation. Thanks to Him, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God's love and shield forgiven. Remember, if we complain for the offerings are in the entrance of the church. Let us read the offertory. Create in me a clean heart of God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. For God, with us salvation is impossible, but with you all things are possible. Give boldness to your church to proclaim Jesus Christ our Lord, by whose death and resurrection the way to your kingdom has been opened. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Spare the servants of your church from love of wealth and from fear of the difficulty of their task, that they would gladly set aside every effort for your sake and for the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, lead our host household to find eternal rest in your Son and His Word. Give fathers and mothers diligence in teaching their children and preserve us all from hardness of heart. Give us urgency to hear the good message of salvation today. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, guide our nation and its leaders in true wisdom to promote honest labor, temporal protection, and fitting enjoyment under the sun. Guide your Christians to serve Christ in their citizenship and calling. Do not let our hearts be occupied with the vanity of riches that perish, but with the true joy of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When the righteous cry, you hear, O Lord, and deliver them out of all their troubles. Draw near to save the broken hearted, the crushed in the spirit, the sick and those in need. Especially, we pray for Cassie, for Susan, for Anne and Mike, for Rainer and Marianne, for Ridva, for Marcus and Bristol, for Lisette and family, for members of Faith Church in London who are going through the same trials and tribulations and need healing. Also, we pray for those we name in our heart and mind.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we thank you for your presence in our life. We acknowledge your love, care, and mercy toward the families of this congregation. Especially this day, we remember Ritva, Risto, Susana, and Marcus. We remember Melanie. We remember Jean and Anna. And we remember James. As well, dear Lord, guide the life of those who are celebrating their birthdays this week especially for Mekina. Father, that you, your steadfast love keep her faith in you all the days of her life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, your Son, always warns of the danger that attachment to wealth and earthly good pos possess to us. Give us hearts that are content with your promises and hands that are generous with this world's goods. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who come to the Lord's altar table, that Christ may mercifully feed us with his very body and blood, and grant us to rejoice forevermore in his love, and to show forth his praise in lives dedicated to work of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, your Son, Hold us fast in our confession through all temptations, and preserve us from sin, O Lord. Give your blessing to all who draw near to your throne of grace, especially those who receive the blessed sacrament this day, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Amen. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord our God. For you bless us morning and evening through the Word incarnate, Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sake died on the cross and rose from the dead, to put an end to death, confident of his daily compassion upon us, and rejoicing in the company of the saints on earth and those above, we loud and magnify your holy name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of Sabbath. Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have showed your gracious power to us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper, first giving of the night he was betrayed, you reveal your sacred pre presence among us. Grant that we receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood 
as we gather at his command. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension to heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but lead us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. To speak the angels' day. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. Please rise. We continue with the post communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. Holy Father, we ask you now, by this blessed meal, share at your gracious invitation to deliver your holy people from every evil, to teach us to love you perfectly, and to make us truly one, even as this bread was made from many grains of wheat to become the carrier of the body of our Savior Jesus Christ. At morning, noontime, and evening, help us to faithfully follow our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Abide, our dearest Jesus.
go to London, to faith in London. So have a blessed day. Enjoy it. And because winter is coming, my friend. Winter is coming. God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord.